This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, December 11, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to the Orlando Sentinel, Isaac Hunter, the troubled son of Northland Church pastor Joel Hunter, has committed suicide, according to an email sent to members of his former church on Tuesday. The email sent by Darling Murray, a coordinator at Summit Church in Orlando, said we found out today that Isaac took his life. We are obviously deeply, deeply devastated and saddened beyond words by this news. The tears keep coming and coming as we mourn. We are praying for his family and the congregation as we walk through this together. Officials of Northland, a church distributed, said they are still awaiting the police report on Isaac Hunter's death, but the church confirmed his death in a statement posted on the Northland website. Summit Church officials did not respond to requests for comment. Isaac Hunter, age 36, resigned on November 26, 2012 from the megachurch he founded after he admitted to other Summit pastors that he had engaged in an affair with a staff member. His wife of 13 years, Rhonda Hunter, subsequently filed a domestic violence petition against Hunter, describing him as unstable, erratic, and suicidal. According to Orange County court documents, Isaac Hunter filed for divorce from Rhonda Hunter on October 4, 2013. In court documents, family members said they found an undated suicide note addressed to Summit Church leaders. Isaac, Joel Hunter's middle child, founded Summit Church in 2002 from a youth ministry at his father's church. Starting with 300 members, Summit became one of the fastest-growing churches in Central Florida, with five locations and an estimated congregation of 5,000. Second today, according to The Independent, Jesus Christ has been named the most successful historical Mimi, beating figures from past and present to be placed top of a database listing the significant figures through time. In their book, Who's Bigger? Where Historical Figures Really Rank, Stephen Skiena and Charles Ward devised an internet-based ranking system to measure Mimi's strength and compare historical reputations. Jesus, the Christian Messiah, beat playwright William Shakespeare, philosopher Aristotle, and Macedonian King Alexander the Great to the top spot. Notably, there are no female historical figures in the top ten. The authors say their internet-based metrics ranking system analysis the English version of the Wikipedia and other data sources to list historical figures, just as Google ranks web pages, estimating their fame and the size of their following. From this, the book identifies the most significant people. Third today, according to USA Today News, budget negotiators announced on Tuesday a bipartisan deal to set spending levels for the federal government for two years and partially replace unpopular spending cuts with other savings. House Budget Chairman Paul Ryan and Senate Budget Chairwoman Patty Murray led the negotiations that had intensified in recent days as a December 13th deadline approaches. In a joint appearance Tuesday evening in the U.S. Capitol, Ryan and Murray said the agreement would stop the government lurching from crisis to crisis and eliminate the threat of another government shutdown. The current stopgap funding measure is scheduled to run out again on January 15th. President Obama praised the deal as a good first step and said he would sign it if it reaches his desk. If approved, the agreement would put the congressional budget process back on track, allowing for passage of the 12 annual bills that cover federal spending, other than mandatory programs such as Social Security and Medicare. Fourth today, according to the Asheville, North Carolina Citizen Times, Franklin Graham made an online plea on Tuesday for prayers for his ailing father, the Reverend Billy Graham. In a note on the website of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, Franklin Graham said his father has been weak since a gala celebration of his 95th birthday held on November 7th at the Omni Grove Park Inn. Franklin Graham said in the note, since that night, a few short weeks ago, he has had another bout with a respiratory infection and was hospitalized briefly before returning home to recuperate. He is extremely weak, but his vitals are good. 
Although weak, Graham does not appear to be in any imminent danger, added Mark DeMoss, a Billy Graham Evangelistic Association spokesman. Franklin Graham said our family would appreciate your prayers for him that the Lord would strengthen him. Fifth today, according to USA Today News, thousands of people waited in long lines on Wednesday to pay their respects to South Africa's former president, Nelson Mandela, whose body arrived in the country's capital of Pretoria, where it will lie in state for three days. On a warm and sunny day, many, mostly black but some whites too, waited for buses to take them to an amphitheater at the Union buildings, once a symbol of the racist, white-dominated government in the country. There, under a tent, the cherished anti-apartheid leader's body is on display ahead of his burial on Sunday. When Mandela took office in 1994, he used the Union buildings as his offices, and the presidency is still located there. It is the same location where he was sworn in as president. President Jacob Zuma named the amphitheater after Mandela by decree on Tuesday. Family members and invited officials have been viewing Mandela's remains throughout morning, and the public has been allowed to file past his casket from noon local time. Six today, according to the Associated Press, Pope Francis has been selected by Time magazine as the person of the year. In only his first year, the Pope was selected by the magazine's editors as the person who had the greatest impact on the world, for good or bad, during 2013. Time managing editor Nancy Gibbs said Pope Francis had changed the tone, the perception, and focus of one of the world's largest institutions in an extraordinary way. Leaker Edward Snowden finished second as Time announced its choice on the Today Show on Wednesday. Seven today, according to USA Today News, a, a couple and four young children who spent two nights in sub-zero weather in a mountainous area of northwestern Nevada were found safe on Tuesday. Pershing County Undersheriff Thomas Jerk said, We have located the people. They have been taken to the hospital. They are alive and well. They are in pretty good shape. Authorities identified the group as James Glanton, age 34, his girlfriend, Christina McEntee, age 25, their two children, Evan and Chloe Glanton, and Shelby Fitzpatrick and Tate McEntee, a niece and nephew of Christina. The children range in age from 3 to 10. Eighth today, according to CNN, riot police moved in on pro-Western protesters in the center of the Ukrainian capital of Kiev with force in the early hours of Wednesday, leading to reports of injuries on both sides. Hundreds of officers used chainsaws and brute force to, ch to tear down barricades put up by demonstrators around the city's Independence Square, or Medan, which has been the focus of protest. Footage from the scene showed a mass of black-helmeted, heavily armored riot police advancing toward the protesters, many of whom wore orange helmets. The demonstrators are angry at the refusal of Ukraine's Russian ally president, Viktor Yukonovich to sign an agreement that would strengthen cooperation with the European Union. The Interior Ministry said 10 policemen were injured between 1 and 4 a.m. while acting on a court order to dislodge protesters from the city center and allow free movement of traffic. Thousands of demonstrators have set up camp in the snow-covered square, determined to maintain their peaceful protest despite the icy temperatures. Nine today, according to the Jerusalem Post, Iran and six world powers began expert-level talks on Monday to work out nitty-gritty details in implementing a landmark accord for Tehran to curb its disputed nuclear program in return for a limited easing of sanctions. The preliminary accord is seen as a first step towards resolving a decade-old standoff over suspicions Iran might be covertly pursuing a nuclear weapons breakout capability a perception that has raised the risk of a wider Middle East war. Tenth and finally today, according to the Jerusalem Post, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Monday that Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons is the greatest threat to a peaceful Middle East. Speaking with visiting Guatemalan President Otto Molina, Netanyahu reiterated his stance that a final nuclear deal with Iran should include the complete dismantling of its nuclear program. 
He told Molina that in his view, a final deal with Iran should include no enrichments, no centrifuges, no heavy water reactor, no weapons program, no ballistic missiles, and a change in Iran's policies, no genocide against Israel, no terrorist support, and no undermining of regimes in the Middle East. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Isaiah 7:14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3:16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.